Okay, so we've projected all the lines for the shadows. Now all we need to do is trap the areas using some polylines and then add the solid fill to uh, create the tone for the shadows. So we'll need a couple more layers to work with. So I'll call the layers command here and let's have a polyline shadow, shadows. I'll make that yellow. Okay, and while I'm here, I may as well make a, a layer for the shadows. Uh, surprisingly enough, I'm going to call that shadows, and I'm going to make that white. Okay, make polyline shadows your current layer, and we'll close that. Okay, so all we need to do now is trace around these shapes, uh, and use polylines for the tricky shapes, and just rectangles for the simple ones. So polyline, and I've got the polyline width set to 25 millimeters, so you can see on the project on the uh, screen grab how it works. So they'll be a bit thicker, so you can see the shapes. Okay, so this is the trickiest one. So I'm going to go from the top along to here, along to the column, and then up and round. Okay, so everything in here is in shadow. Okay, we get to the start of the framing, come up to this line. Okay, so it's a bit of up, down, across, up, down, across kind of stuff. So let your object snaps do all the work here. You just keep an eye on the shape. Okay, it gets a wee bit wider here because of the shadow from the wall. Okay, along, up to the corner of the roof, and then C and return to close that shape. Okay, we've got a very thin shadow up here, so I'm just going to rectangle that. Okay, the rectangle command doesn't automatically set itself with a width there. Now, we can do that, we could set a width. So, just now I can match it to this one, but let's set a width for the rectangle as we draw this one. So it's rectangle, we want the width on this, okay, 25 millimeters, okay, and then you can see it's drawn it with a bit more beef. Okay, here we only need to draw two of these. And we can copy the two across. Okay, just using the same base point each time. Ah, haha, nearly found the trap there. This, the end one is slightly shorter because some of it's hidden behind the wall. If you click on the click on the rectangle, you can adjust its, its positions. Okay, so we'll copy that again. the extent of the shadows. Okay, so we'll change to our shadows layer now. Okay, and I wouldn't hatch these all in one go, because if you do want to change something, you'll find it a bit trickier later on. So it's hatch, solid, select objects. Okay, just do your first one, just make sure it works. Press enter to finish, enter to bring back the command and it's expecting you to do the same thing. So just pick another object, enter. Okay, see it's white inside. Enter to restart the command. I would maybe do all these together. Not likely to change the bench again. Enter to finish, enter to bring back the command. Just two more to do, the big one, return. Return to bring back the command, and then the thin one there, enter to finish. Okay, looks all very strange in model space because of the, the kind of density of the shading there. Okay, we don't need to see the polyline anymore, and we don't need to see the projections anymore. Okay. 
Okay, the shadows layer, we could adjust the density of it. So in the layer properties, if we give the shadow layer some transparency, and you can type in any number you want, but you can pick the tens from here. Okay. And this will only show up when we print the the file. Okay, we can we should send these to the back though. So use the draw order command. Pick your shadow areas. Return twice. Okay, so we see the line work on top. Okay, we could also add some information for the windows as well. So instead of them, they, at the moment, they kind of appear as if they are walls as well. There's nothing there to differentiate them from any walls. So let's create another layer as well. Let's have one for the window glass. Let's just call it glass. Okay, I'm going to choose a color for this. A kind of a dull blue. Something like that, that looks okay. Just a dullish blue and we'll give this some transparency as well. Actually, it's just picked it up from the current layer anyway. Okay, make that current. Okay, and then if we hatch, it's gonna do solid, select objects, and you can pick the red lines around the windows. Just keep going, just pick those red lines. They're, they're, they're squares anyway, they're rectangles anyway. So it should behave itself. So I'm just going pretty canny there. Just make sure I get the right line. And one more to do. Enter to finish. And if we put that behind the shadows, so draw order, pick your window glazing if it lets you. It's being a bit fussy, there we go. I think we've got it now. Return twice. Okay, so that goes behind the glazing. We switch the layer off right at the start. 2D elevation, very thin line. We'll bring that back. Okay, let's see what this looks like in our layout now. So I have a elevation ready to go, the viewport ready to set up. Let's just check the page setup here. Page setup manager modify we've set layers to have transparency so you need to have the tick on here otherwise it's not going to carry that through okay we've got a ctb file ready to go we can preview this and it looks pretty good okay we're still seeing our paneling showing up on top there the windows have got a nice you know a little bit of color to them the shadow is not too heavy, it's not obliterating the line work. Now that's going to print out nicely. We could change the density of that if we wanted to. And we'll just increase the transparency if you didn't want them too heavy. Just want a hint of shadows. Now that would work as well. But there's nice depth there in that, in that drawing. We can tell what's coming towards us, what's receding. The shadow is changing its depth as it goes along. Okay, it's something that you know doesn't take that much time to do. It's usually at the end of the process, so quite often you're quite kind of happy to be at that stage anyway. Um, and you know you're very near the end of the process when you're adding shadows, so usually you know it's not that big a chore to do that. Okay, I hope that's been useful.